Hey, I'm Alon, and today I'm going to teach you how to create a crypto wallet. So first, we have to understand what exactly are crypto wallets. And you can think about them in three ways. They are your interface for your Ethereum account. They hold your crypto assets, and they're your digital identity when you're interacting with Web3. There are two primary types of crypto wallets. One is a cold wallet, which is a physical device that you can actually hold in your hands. And the second is a hot wallet, which is computer software that you run and connect to the internet. So one is physical, one is virtual. Because cold wallets are physical devices that you hold in your hand, they're not actually connected to the internet. And this can have benefits and a little bit of downsides. The benefit is it tends to be less prone to scams. It's less likely to get exposed to phishing hacks or any sort of attacks that can happen on the internet because it's this physical device that's disconnected. The downside is that it can be a little bit less accessible. So if you want to be able to do things quickly and interact with applications in Web3, it's harder to do so with this physical device you have to have with you. Some examples of cold wallets include Ledger and Trezor. These are trusted entities that create these cold wallets. And generally, when you're looking for cold wallets, you want to use projects and companies that have really good reputations since your funds are going to be stored on this physical device. What hot wallets are, are software. It's just an interface that we can use to connect to the blockchain. Unlike cold wallets, hot wallets are actually connected to the internet. And this has some downsides and benefits as well. The downside is that if you're connected to the internet, just like with email scams and Facebook scams and any link that you can get, you can be more susceptible to attacks. Not necessarily because the wallet will get hacked, but because people make user errors and they click on things that they shouldn't click on. And you're more likely to do that on the internet than if you have a physical device that you're only using to exchange crypto. So you have to be a little bit careful when you're using your hot wallet. Make sure you only connect your wallet to things that you actually do trust. That said, it's a lot more accessible to be able to engage with Web3 applications and use decentralized applications because you're automatically connected to the internet and you can use it instantly. The core components of a wallet really break down into three things. One is your public key. This is your address that's visible to everyone. You can share it, you'll send it out. It's where you can send and receive crypto. It's this public address that's visible to everyone. The second component is your private key, right? So there's a public key and then there's the private key. This private key acts as your signature. The analogy I like to give is if your public key is your account number, then the private key is the PIN number that you shouldn't share with anyone. It actually allows you to do things. You can't just do things with the public key. You need the private key to actually sign the transaction and confirm it's you. So the private key is something you should not share ever. The third component is the seed phrase. This is another thing that you absolutely should not share with anyone. It's a series of 12 words that unlocks your account. With the seed phrase, you're able to sign into your crypto wallet on any interface. It's super, super, super important to never share your seed phrase and never expose it and keep it in a very safe place. All right, now that we have a little bit of background on what wallets are and the components that go into them, we're gonna actually set one up.